You want to know what it takes to build a gun range inside your house? Stay tuned. I want to show you what it takes to build a gun range inside your house. It's going to be ventilation, soundproofing, flooring, the retrieval system, you name it, the rubber, all that stuff. We're going to go into detail of the costs so you guys know if you ever want to build your range 10 yards, 20 yards, whatever, you have an idea of what it's going to cost you. Hopefully this video will help you out. Let's check it out. So we're gonna have Johnny in here today. And the one thing you guys don't know about Johnny, besides being a good friend, is he's been in the gun industry for a while, especially the targeting industry. And he knows what it takes to build one of these ranges. So we're gonna lean on him a little bit as far as cost factors and some more details that maybe I don't know. Cool. Correct, Johnny? Yeah, he's right. I know a lot about everything, specifically this thing. So it'll be fun to talk about it and show you guys how to do it. Uh, Matt, you built a one lane Right. Range. And that was mainly because this was an existing hallway already. It was a hallway prior person that lived here was going to turn into a bowling alley. Ah. And I don't bowl. Chad's the only one that bowls because he's a freak of nature. So that's why I'd rather go to the gun range. I bowl if there's pizza. Okay, so it was a one lane range. One lane range. This is four feet? Yeah. Maybe five feet. Yep. Cool. In commercial gun ranges, they're usually about, about this take. width. Yep. A little bit shorter, maybe if they right. want to cram more lanes in. But you've got ballistics sliding over here and over there with uh, this ABS skin that makes it so when brass hits it, it doesn't nick it up. This is steel, this is steel, this is steel. Everything's really freaking heavy. Even though what we're sitting on is steel. What we're sitting on is steel and it lifts up. Let's show you that now. As far as length, like what do you have, 25 yards? This is 30. 30 yards, yep. You can do a range of any size. I've seen private home ranges of seven yards, right? If they just want a pistol training bay, depending on whatever space, they can make a range for that. It's gonna be cheaper, obviously, if there's less space because he's got steel lining both of these walls. Concrete. Okay, so concrete steel. on this side, steel on this side, but you're gonna have to be ballistic on all four sides. So up here above, you see this little pretty white stuff. That's just below the AR500 or 550 steel that right. they have above. So that's because of ricochet. Anything can go however it is, especially commercial range owners. They'll tell you people are horrible shots. I've never done that here though, have I? Played the fifth? I've shot a couple pieces of Matt's range down before. You're going to have to have HVAC. You can kind of hear that going on in the background. Why that's important is because lead dust will kill you. And in commercial ranges, they have air and the air pushes everything down range, sucks it up into the ventilation unit over there. So it's going to push all that lead dust as you're shooting. It'll push it and uh, push it down and then sucks it up into the Fans. filtration system. Right. HVAC is extremely important if you're gonna build a range for your home, as well as having a door to seal it off from the rest of the home so that there's not lead dust. Right. What's the ventilation cost for a big range? Ventilation can go from anywhere from $400,000 to a couple million based mm -hmm. on your range size, right? Because- 10 range. Al also 10 options, options with your ventilation, which I'm sure you didn't get either of those, but commercial ranges, they want their shooters to be comfortable as well, right? So they're getting heat. They're getting AC in there as well for the nice ranges. You still are at 74 degrees. And in the summer, you don't come in and it's at 85 degrees in the range, but you're actually shooting as comfortable as a 70 degree range. And I think that makes a big difference whether people want to shoot at your range or not. So splurging for that, but some people cheap out on it. Yep. Some people cheap out on it and they don't put the air conditioning, like the temperature and the, and the heat and cool. And I think that makes a big difference in whether people go. I know what it out. costs me to do ours. Right. Because ours comes from upstairs and moves through that system and pushes everything that way. I would put a guess that your HVAC was close to 100,000. A little bit less, but yeah. 80-ish. 80-ish, yeah. 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 So one lane, 80. Now, sometimes, especially with private home ranges, it's, it's difficult because you've got to figure out where to put everything because there's a house above you, right? So you can't just put it on the roof like people do for commercial ranges. So you've right. got to, I'm, I know that we have out in the front right there, you've got a bunch of fans. Yeah, out front is all the fans for the ventilation, right? right. They're like the exhaust fans you see at the top of a restaurant coming out the front of my house. It looks pretty pathetic. Kind of cool at the same time. No, it's great. Nobody <laughs> sees that half of the house. Yeah. But that's, that's a big consideration too. So if you're building a house, talk 
talk to the gun range people before you build the house if you're trying to build a range inside of it because you've got to know where to be able where you're going to be able to put the HVAC and make plans for that. If it's an existing house, it is what it is. You got to figure it out, and they can figure it out in most cases. But uh, if you're building right now your home and thinking about putting a gun range in it, wait. Talk to the range people first and go from there. Right, because I've seen. Oh, sorry. When there's threats, I just react. You swell up. All right, retriever system. I believe it's a lot like cars these days. Every car has the same capability to have the same technology. And this, at the time when you built this range, this was the top of the top. Right, so over here, pretty cool. You can come into this range, home system, let's get home. You can go through their drills and they have a whole bunch of preset drills in here. You can do a charging drill where the target's running at you and you're firing at it as That's it's coming favorite. back. That was one we did with post when we were yeah. like right here and then the target's down range 10 yards and then when it starts to run at you, then you can turn around, draw, and you gotta get five shots on target before it gets to you, right? So fun stuff like that. I mean, there's different types of lights. Like you can go, you can go dim, you can go police where you can go fire an emergency, whatever kind of training or to Traction or for cops, if they're training at an indoor range, they want those lights being the background they're familiar with when they're training with a firearm because if they're in a shooting, likely those lights are in the background. I can't remember how much that system costs though. I was having trouble thinking about that. I was actually trying to find the invoice the other day. Lanes usually will be priced depending on the equipment you get, right? Because right. you got the top line stuff, but you could go anywhere from like six, eight thousand dollars per lane on an estimated price to fifteen thousand dollars per lane. And the expensive part of it again happens with all this steel and all that steel and then all this foam stuff that's noise yeah. reduction, right? That's yeah. what that's what the purpose is, is noise reduction. No reverb. You had concrete on this side, which is good. Right. Which means that's ballistic, right? But right. as you come down here, and you know because you shoot the walls all the time, you can replace these I pieces don't one at a shoot time. Shoot walls. See how they puzzle piece in? You can take this piece out and, and get right here, Chad. It shows you how thick they are. They're about about two inches thick. You'll see some of the bullet holes up here, right? That's what Johnny did. Shots that will go up there, they're gonna ricochet off that steel, but they're gonna splatter, and, and that's what the white part is for, is to catch the splatter. Don't shoot steel targets on your indoor range. And this is why. Because it will chip up the floor. Oh, right here, is this it? Yep, that's it. Now, in building your gun range, rubber is going to be about a tenth of the cost as having a steel trap. A steel trap costs 10 times more. Rubber is also much more sound suppressing, so it's not gonna be super loud. Have you ever shot a steel target at a suppressed event? The steel target hit is much louder than the shot, right? Like, it, it, it hurts. So same thing with a steel target, steel indoor range, like, it hurts to shoot. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's a very it's loud very annoying. Noise. It's very annoying. So for any home range, A, you're not doing the volume that matters. The only reason to do a steel trap is so that you can recoup all of the lead that is coming to your range and you can sell that and recycle that. You shoot a ton, but you shoot how many rounds a month? Thousand? Maybe. Different. When it matters, we're talking about a million rounds a month. That's when it matters, right? A couple hundred thousand, sure, you'll, you'll be able to recycle it, but you're going to instantly get that return from recycling that lead and that brass from about a million rounds a month. And that's that's a busy range. That's we not like a, lead out about, a crazy busy range. And we clean the lead out about once a year. If you come in here too, like we can see there will be some whole, whole rounds as it get cap, gets captured in there. It hits rubber, it does not expand, it does not explode, all those things. So when you have it cleaned, people come in, they shovel this with hazmat suits on, they should. This is like an OSHA thing, right? We'll go wash our hands now, OSHA, I promise. They'll shovel that and sift it out as if they're mining gold. And, and it's really neat the way they do it because they use a rake yeah. and a leaf blower because lead's heavier. So the leaf blower blows the rubber away and all you see, see is lead. It's pretty time consuming. Because usually they have a machine that does it, doesn't they? That's kind of a more ancient way to do it. About 6,000 pounds of rubber. And then on the back, you still have, and you'll see it up here, a steel plate because you have to be 100% encapsulated by ballistic material, right? So there's a steel, steel plate coming up to meet these baffles, is what these are called, and the baffles have steel above them, right? And it's probably, yeah, quarter inch, three eighths. Yeah, there's space in between it because it's got... Yeah, and you've got plywood on the back side of this, and then you've got the steel, it saves space, basically. Yeah. And then you've got your HVAC right through that door, right? Yeah, the downside of that, the you gotta move the rubber to get there, which lesson learned. Do that, that'd be one of the things you guys don't do that. But nobody makes a ballistic door, so we had to have one built because you know, boilers and water heaters don't do well to. Do you just go bullets. to doors, doors are us or doors.com? Uh, no, I had one professionally built from a professional door builder with builder. ballistic with 
It's all, yeah, it's Pick up a too. steel frame. 44 door. mag, directly shot. You did, uh, what's this called again? This is real fancy. Oh, they use the same stuff that they use in, uh, in garages. Garages and stuff. Right. Your hazmat suit and cleaning it up and taking care of it and doing all that. But uh, That's one of the things I would have done over is this. What over. would you have done? I would have done probably a gray. Oh, color-wise. Color-wise. Okay. Just because it's not you can't bright. Because this room, whole gun range is dark. This yeah. is on the brightest setting, the lights are. So, done the lights totally different. More of a spotlight. More of a like a 24,000 lumens. Something really freaking bright. Dim it all so you can dim it and stuff like that. But the floor, I would have gone a different color just to make it more brighter in here. So, you're not using uh, much light. So, you can actually see. So it's not as dark. Because it's hard to see a target and it's all the way down here sometimes. So, that's why I take a GoPro and I put it on that and connect it to my phone. I can see where I'm hitting on the target. Right. Because the GoPro is connected to my phone live. Which most most of the systems now, especially the top tier systems, have a camera built into the retriever. So they're looking at the target. So on the little iPad down there, you see where your shots are landing. Um, so that's pretty cool. So coming back down, you said the ventilation unit was about 80,000. Yep. 80,000 for ventilation for a one lane thing where they had access to put the ventilation units that was pretty easy. They didn't have to do too much work to do that. A lot of the cost is gonna come again from the steel, from right. the labor. Everything is ready, yeah. pre-cut when they yeah. deliver it. And 25,000 pounds of steel. Go look up the price for AR-550 steel right now. Matt would have paid a million dollars easy for this range today in today's market. You, you really have two decisions to make. One decision, two choices. Do I want to shoot at a static target or do I want to actually train and have targets that interact with me and turn and twist and flip and jump and dance? If this costs Matt 400,000 for another lane with steel on both sides, you're probably another couple hundred thousand. Just because this, I know the cost of steel has gone up a lot uh -huh. since then, like 10x right. from when you bought. I would bet this is a million dollar project. 700 to a million. What's the cheapest way to do it? Rubber like that, but when you want to replace the rubber here, because it's shot up and there's a right. lot of lead stuff, you have to remove all of that and bring in new bags. Right. And how many pounds? 6,000 pounds of rubber. I think they may have figured out something cool. They they have a, a rubber block that is hollow and they line the walls with it. They line the back with it. And so then it's almost like, like Legos, like they stack on top of each other. Right. And then if you shoot into this one and that one needs replaced, so it's hollow and they is put the shredded rubber inside. Right. But then if this one gets shot up to where you got to replace it, you just take that one out, dump out the bad rubber, put new rubber in and, right. and fix it instead of having to replace the whole thing. Right. So that was pretty cool that I almost did, but then it wasn't as much fun as this would be. Yeah. It's just a bullet trap and that's it. Yeah, so there's a there's a company out in uh, Utah that does some pretty cool ranges <laughs> called Spire Ranges. Uh -huh. um, they do cool stuff. There's Milo that we talked about that right. does the Conex box style ranges. Mega right. is one of the really big ones. They own most of like military contract type. Like I said at the beginning, there's probably five companies that matter when it comes to building a gun range and choosing. And I feel like it's a lot like the car. Everybody has access to the same tech. So outside of that, it's like pick the partner that you want, pick the best price. Everybody uses the same company for for ventilation and if you guys want to know any more ask questions and comments me and johnny will try to you know answer them the best we know if i don't know the answer i'll refer it to johnny and maybe he'll be able to answer it and help you guys out as well also 12 percent chance that we said something wrong here today <laughs> so call us out on it if you know i'm sure uh, they will. range companies if you're watching this comment below with your website let everybody go look at your stuff man if there's one thing you can say you would change after you built your one lane indoor range for four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars what would you change what would I change? One thing. It would have to be lighting. See, I, I agree, but I think the whole reason why you would say that is because of the YouTube. And the YouTube didn't come until six years after you built it. No, this. I didn't like the lighting to begin with. You didn't. Before YouTube. It was, it was before. It was before YouTube. Once we put it up, it was so dark, it looked like a man cave and everything else. So that's why I have like a snap-on light here just to make that brighter. The magnetic light they put in toolboxes and stuff. If you guys got any more questions and if you guys, I'm sure you guys are going to tell us if we did something wrong, of course, I'm good with that. But if you got any more questions or anything at all, please hit us up and hit subscribe. Take care.